Jalen Yu is one of the top U.S. men's national team youth prospects, even being called in for the U.S. men's national team Gold Cup roster in playing several minutes as a 19-year-old. He might even be the top U-20 center back prospect the United States has right now. So today, we are going to have an exclusive interview with Jalen Neal himself. Hi, I'm Junior Han Filippo, and welcome to Tactical Manager TV, and welcome to our first, and hopefully not the last, interview with Jalen Neal from the LA Galaxy. We're going to talk a lot about him. You're going to learn much more about the player. So sit back, relax, enjoy, and hit the like button. If we get enough likes, we'll bring multiple other players here at the channel, as long as you enjoy it. All right, let's play the intro, and let's bring in Jalen Neal. Okay, everyone, today we have another U.S. Youth National Team prospect. We've had multiple here at the channel, but Jalen, you might not even be considered a Youth National Team prospect right now. You just played in the senior team in the Gold Cup. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm uh, happy to be here talking to you. Appreciate you having me. And I appreciate also you taking the time to come here at the channel. And I won't really waste much of your time. I want to get straight to it. I think when it comes to players that are upcoming and rising, you're 19 right now. A lot of the fans don't know much about you. So why don't you go through how, to, especially in the United States, right? Just so I can, you can understand my question. In the United States, kids play multiple sports, right? You go to Brazil. I don't have to ask you why you started playing soccer in Brazil. Almost yeah. every kid plays it. So why don't you start from the beginning? How did you start playing soccer? Why did you start playing soccer? How did you get to the Galaxy Academy, your development until we get to the now? Then when we get to the now, we'll talk about the Galaxy and U.S. men's national team. Yeah. Um, so I think it started when I was around like three. Um, my mom, my mom just told me I liked kicking things around. So, uh, yeah, they put me in soccer. And I mean, I was just drawn to it my whole life, really. I tried um, like uh, baseball and basketball, but not, none of them worked out. Um, so I just I just kept going with soccer and, you know, I just found I couldn't get away from it. So I was playing club uh, for think six years from like five to 11. And then I started playing in the academy uh, with Galaxy. So I was there for about four and a half years in the academy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I signed my first pro contract. So did your mom play soccer or your dad? My mom played soccer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She played some soccer. I, I said before that she didn't, but she's had to correct me on that one. Okay. But um, okay. No, my dad, my dad was all basketball though. So, so it's not that you just kicked stuff around. Your mom probably wanted you to play some soccer too. Yeah, 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 for sure. I'm probably sure. a good decision. Good decision yeah. at the end of the day. Great, great decision. Uh, I mean, I mean, if I did play basketball, I think, I think I would have been pretty decent up mm -hmm. to this point. Yeah, I, I but, wouldn't. I was terrible at it. I was terrible yeah, at basketball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but let me ask you one thing, because I, uh, your mom is actually very vocal on Twitter in the soccer community, and I saw her post something once about you playing futsal did you play futsal in your development um it wasn't really like um it was just a tournament my club team at the time like put us in it was just like a little like weekend thing um but i was in that tournament maybe like three or four times um and at deaf touch so it would be you know on the futsal court some games on the turf some games but i mean yeah i, I enjoyed it a lot though when i was when i was playing okay uh the reason i asked that is this uh I don't know how much you followed for how long you, well, I mean, you've always watched, but how closely you follow U.S. soccer as a whole in terms of a spectator, right? I know you're playing, obviously you live, breathe it, but the thing was with American center backs in the past, and even some of the current ones that are much older than yourself, they weren't very technical on the ball, right? They weren't very much like ball playing defenders, which the evolution of the game requires that. And you're a ball playing defender. Uh, Brendan Craig, also another U20 player, very good on the ball. It looks mm -hmm. like our center backs are becoming much more skilled on the ball than the previous generation, which is a normal evolution of the game. Mm -hmm. Yourself, in terms of being good on the ball, comfortable in possession, making line breaking passes, was that something that just came naturally from the development of the Galaxy Academy? Or is it something that you worked on it yourself more specifically? I think at first it came just naturally, even like in club, um, like there was a point one season, my coach had me playing center mid and I ended up doing good, but I mean, I didn't really enjoy it. I would, I would rather play center back. So um, drop back to center back. That was like right before I joined the academy. But um, yeah, the academy definitely did. I mean, they would never, 
really um, put forth physical um, than, you know, technical ability. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, there was like a certain age where like, you know, physical ability was such like a hot, like um, it was so like marginalized that, you know, some coaches couldn't look over it. It would win them games. But, you know, there comes a certain point where everybody catches up, you know, physically and, you know, you have to rely on your technical and tactical ability. And I think I might have known that a little earlier. Um, so I wasn't too, you know, too worried about, you know, getting my physical attributes up, you know. I was more worried about the technical and tactical side of the game. Yeah, th that's good to hear because that's always been an issue with academies in the U.S. many, many years ago, right? Not, now it seems like it's changing where, like you just said, a kid that sometimes just, you know, grew earlier uh, among the 14-year-olds, 15-year-olds, there's an advantage. They'll play that kid instead of a kid that's maybe more technical. And when everyone becomes a grown adult, the physical ability kind of evens out. And then the exactly. technical ability is what differentiates the players. Mm -hmm. And that kid sometimes didn't get an opportunity. But uh, that's why I asked if it was something that the academy focused on. And clearly it looks like something that I think the academies as a whole in the U.S. are evolving in that. Now, why don't we go through a little bit? You played uh, this season is your breakout season in MLS, right? You, you, If I'm not mistaken, you got some minutes last year, too. But this is the season you really locked in that starting job, correct? Yeah. Oh, Before I think I think last year last year I didn't have any MLS minutes. You played only on USL. Yeah, only only USL and one Open Cup appearance, I believe. Okay, so yeah. going through that, the USL and MLS, what, how difficult was it to adapt from one another? Um, I'd say, I'd say adapting to MLS would um would probably be harder for me than going from academy to USL. Um, I mean. Like, no doubt, it was still a hard process going from academy to USL just because of the obvious things on um, the physical side of the game. Everyone's stronger, faster, quicker than you. Uh, the speed of play is much faster than what you're used to and the quality. So um, it's a it's a pretty it's a pretty uh, big shock, like your first few games. But I think um, once you kind of get it down, then I mean, it's, it's good from there. And then playing MLS, uh, it was just another step up, you know, same same things. Guys are faster, stronger, um, you know, have much more experience at, you know, higher levels than what you've ever played. Um, some guys, you know, had huge careers in Europe. So just things like that. Um, the quality is much higher. Are you ready to mark Messi? Yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm looking forward <laughs> to it. I, I'm so excited. I ho really hope we play uh, in Miami next season. Yeah. I'm, I'm, sure I, every, I, I'm sure every team is, but. Yeah, I haven't looked at the schedule. I mean, you'll definitely probably face him next season if you're still in Major League Soccer. We're going to talk about transfers at some point, but but I mean, as a 19-year-old to be playing against Messi, that's going to be pretty cool when it happens, regardless of the stage yeah. of his career. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Great change, too. So let's go through this. Uh, I I don't think there's much more for me to talk about the Galaxy. There's some center backs there that I'm assuming helped you transition. Cassidy's right. The Uruguayan veteran probably mm -hmm. was some good help and. And you look like you belong right away in the league. And then you go into the Gold Cup. You it got you a national team call up in January, right? Yeah. You got called in January. That was your first one for the senior team. And then, but that was a camp that was only focused on MLS. And you go to Gold Cup, which was also focused on MLS players, but you make the roster once again. And this time you actually started, if I'm not mistaken, three out of the four games or you started most of the games besides the first one, I think, and the last one. I think those mm -hmm. are the only two you didn't start. And were you dealing? You were dealing with an injury in the last game, right? Um. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. A little uh, adductor strain, but muscle. Yeah. It's, it's all taken care of. Okay. So you had a bit of an injury, and you didn't start that match. Talk about the U.S. Men's National Team experience. I always found I always find that fascinating. And for the Gold Cup roster, we talked about this a lot of times, right? We mainly wanted mostly young guys to gain experience. Did you feel like this experience actually helped you grow? Because I know most of your development will be through club. There's no way around that because you spend probably like 90% of your time with the club or more. Mm. But what did this experience help you overall being with the United States men's national team for the Gold Cup, the competition, playing? Uh, sorry about that. Um, I would just say, you know, facing different types of players, um, you know, in these CONCACAF tournaments, there's, you know, different types of playing styles that you come up against. And, you know, a lot of these teams, um, especially – against the way we we like to play. They're going to be hitting a lot of long balls towards you. So, I mean, one area that I really wanted to improve on, you know, throughout the year is my aerial duels. And I think this tournament was, you know, a great test for that. You know, every game, 
their you know opposing team was just hitting long balls you know towards our back line so it's little stuff like that that you get to take away from these camps you know little stuff that you get to um, become better at that you know you you probably wouldn't get in the MLS because you know it's more balls on the ground playing you know stuff like that more possession based did you did you feel like in any moment uh, I do think MLS is a higher level than Con- you don't have to even respond that one so you don't get controversial here but I do think that MLS is a higher level from a technical standpoint than most of CONCACAF but did you feel like the tournament maybe was a bit more intense because it's a cup right especially like for example the Canada game that's a knockout round right there's mm-hmm. more at stake I wouldn't call the St. Kitts and Nevis and Trinidad game that but the the Canada game, for example, did you feel like the intensity was much higher? Something that you don't experience maybe in a less regular season it was a bit different. Yeah, for sure. And you know, I would say the stakes had you know something to do with that. Um, obviously, I mean, rivalry game to begin with, and also it's a knockout game too. So I mean, stakes are super high for that game. Obviously, there's going to be more tension and competitiveness than you know you would get in a regular season MLS game. Now, Jalen, I don't know how much you can dive into this here. But you were eligible for the U20 World Cup. I know that they wanted to call you up. Was the reason you weren't released because you were going to be called up for the Gold Cup? Like the Galaxy didn't want to lose you for two months. Are you able to talk about that? Uh, Yeah, but no, that, that wasn't the reason. Um, I mean, at the time, Galaxy wasn't, we weren't doing the best. Um, and everyone was aware of that, you know, there was a lot going on at the club. Um, but I mean, also, we didn't have much um, center back depth at the time. So, you know, it was a conversation between, you know, a lot of parties, um, you know, Greg, my agent, um, Mikey Varis. And uh, yeah, at the end of the day, we came to an agreement, you know, that I would stay at Galaxy. It'd probably be the best. Let's just make clear. Greg is your agent. No, no. Greg Vanny. Sorry. Greg Vanny. Okay, please. You got to make that clear. Otherwise, people are going to think Greg Berhalter was talking to you. Oh, no, no, no. (laughs) Just to make that clear, Greg Vanny, because uh, yes. you said Greg, my agent, people are going to say, what, Greg Berhalter's talking to you? No, oh, no, no, we got that now. So you didn't find out about the Gold Gold Cup call-up till after? That's when you, you found yeah. out? Yeah, yeah, after U20 World Cup. Was it a big surprise, or you were expecting it? Um, I was, I mean, I wouldn't say expecting it, but I, I knew, um, you know, my name was around there. You know, I was hearing a lot about it from teammates and just outside noise you tend to hear often. But, um, yeah, I mean, I was super excited for it. And then, you know, the days were coming up um, that the official roster was going to come out. And, I mean, I was still doing good at my club. So, yeah, I was I was really hoping for it and then ended up getting it, obviously. Okay. Before we move on to transfer rumors or whatever you can talk about in regards to that, one more thing about national team. Next year, we have the Copa America and we have the Olympics. The Olympics were going to bring a U23 squad because you can't bring players over that age except for three, which means you are in contention in being in that roster because it's mostly going to be the U20 players, right? Mm. I'm assuming for the Olympics, whether you're with the Galaxy or not, uh, they would probably release you at, at a young age. And there's camps coming up too for the, the U20s. Has has U.S. soccer or the coaching staff, pro- probably Mikey Vadas, I think he'll be the coach. Uh, I don't have the confirmation for that. Uh, have they talked about about it with the players already? Are you guys getting ready for the Olympics? What are your expectations for that? That's something you are probably going to be in the list as long as you're healthy, of course, and hopefully you are. Yeah. I mean, I haven't heard anything on my part um, about the Olympics. I mean, there could be talks, but if there are, I mean, I haven't been involved in any so far. So honestly, yeah, I have, have no thought towards that. I mean, obviously, mm-hmm. I want to go to that. Um, it would be a great tournament to be at. But yeah, I haven't heard anything so far. Yeah, and even though in regards to soccer, sure, the Olympics doesn't have the prestige that it has for all the other sporting, um, all the other sports, right? But still, it's it's massive, right? To be representing the United States in the Olympics, the possibility of getting a medal, that's huge for any player. And I think I often say this, how in terms of growing the sport in America, I feel like the Olympics is very underrated, the influence it can have, because regular sports fans will be watching and paying attention. For us, soccer fans it's less prestigious, I guess, compared to like a Copa America that would be going to be playing Brazil, Argentina's 18. But mm. for the average sports fan in this country, they follow every single sport they can with the Americans in it, in the Olympics. And yeah. they'll watch men's soccer if we're doing well. And it might even be a surprise to them how well we can do. They don't, a lot of them don't even know that we're much better than we once were, especially because we yeah. haven't played the Olympics. I think, I think we missed the last three editions. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I, I agree. I mean, the sport's growing so much in this country. I think more eyes will be open to it. Yeah. And Jalen, uh, lastly, so I don't take much more of your time. I think it's silly for me to ask you if you have aspirations or not to go to Europe at some point. I think any young player nowadays wants to be in the best leagues in the world. And at this time, MLS is a great league, but there are better leagues in Europe. This is not controversial or anything. And every player I brought here when I asked them, like, yeah, we want to go to the best leagues. If MLS is the a top five league in the world 10 years from now, players are going to want to stay here or come here. Uh, so obviously, I'm going to assume that you do have plans of going there some, uh, at some point. Did you ever receive an inquiry or an, even an offer from any clubs in Europe or interest? And if you did, I know you probably can't tell me the club, but are you able to mention the country or league? I mean, I've heard the most I've heard is what everybody's talking about, um, like the rumors, you know, um, PSV, Feyenoord, but I haven't heard anything direct. Um, but yeah, obviously, obviously I have aspirations to go to Europe eventually. Um, right now, I'm, you know, focused on kind of establishing, you know, a, a role in the league, you know, MLS um, before I, you know, move on to Europe. But um, I mean, I've heard as much as you guys. Your contract with the Galaxy is till how long? Um, I have this season and next season. Guaranteed. So two more seasons. OK, yeah. so, yeah, they're going to either renew or look to sell so they can make some money because you're a young player. So they can make a couple million dollars off a transfer, yeah, here, especially after. A breakout season but Jalen uh that's all I wanted to talk about hopefully now by the end of the interview U.S. men's national team fans know more about you right you're a player that's rising right now so there's not that much stuff out there and yeah. thank you very much for taking the time to be here with us yep no problem appreciate you having me all right thank you very much for watching everyone drop a like before you go have a great day we'll see you all next time bye-bye